Some time ago, the FBI released a list. This list was of sharp hackers, in which the name of one hacker was Happy Hacker. In fact, one of the biggest reasons for calling him a happy hacker is that in all his photographs that have been published so far, his face is seen smiling. But the feat he did left people in awe. Actually, the story of this hacker starts in the year 2009. Some banks in Georgia, America, were receiving strange complaints. Someone complained that their money was being withdrawn from their bank account without their permission, and this complaint was not only of common customers, but also of big officials and business people. But among the complaints being lodged in banks, one such complaint was the most shocking. Microsoft is the company that provides software to the world. After this, the police became more alert. He understood that this matter was very serious and serious, and at the same time, the Georgia police realized that this was no longer in their control. Therefore, the FBI became alert regarding this very serious matter. When the FBI saw the pile of complaints, they, too, could not live without being shocked. By then, complaints of hacking of about 60 million computers had been registered. The accounts related to this were almost hollowed out by scrutinizing them, and all this happened within just three years. When the FBI jumped into the field of investigation in this case of hacking, it understood very well that whoever had hacked so many computers would have gotten control over all the information, data, and accounts in a way. Who knows where he was? But because of this, the police were forced to wander in the dark. FBI investigation says that in just three years, this happy hacker, along with one of his associates, had embezzled $4 billion from different accounts from 2009 to 2012. This is such a huge amount that it would take the common people as much time to count it as it took for it to be stolen. Perhaps it was the wonder of this amount that it had made the FBI, as well as the international police, very nervous. The biggest question before the FBI was who is this person who has stolen the sleep of all the agencies of the world along with the police of the whole world? This was such a deception that even its shadow could not be detected by the investigating agencies. For several days and nights, FBI agents were worried while searching the horoscopes of all the hackers around the world when suddenly they got a piece of information. The news was that there was a hacker in Algeria, Hamza Bendelaj. Now, all the FBI agents who were engaged in this project were behind this name. The FBI, which gathered information within a short time, found out the entire past of Hamza Bendelaj. Hamza was a 20-year-old software engineer. It was also revealed that he was suspected of emptying people's accounts by hacking. On the basis of this suspicion, the American agency has now started preparing a new list of its related exploits. Besides, an FBI agent also went after Hamza. After months of wandering, an FBI agent somehow managed to reach Hamza, and he won Hamza's trust by proving himself to be a hacker. And together, they started planning to break into the accounts of criminal people, especially through hacking. At that time, a new software had come into use. Its name was SpyEye. Actually, this software present on the dark web was prepared by Hamza himself and his partner, and through this software, these people committed virtual robberies all over the world. After Hamza's secret was revealed, FBI agents prepared a new plan so that Hamza could be arrested. Therefore, he talks to Hamza about purchasing his prepared software SpyEye and also prepares Hamza for it. But even before the software can be delivered and supplied, Hamza slips away from the FBI. Of course, this operation of the FBI was only half successful, but one of the biggest successes achieved by the FBI was that they had found the face of the name whom they had been chasing. This means that Hamza's identity is now completely known to the FBI so that they can spread his face all over the world and alert the police all over the world. After this, the FBI starts extracting all the details of Hamza. It is revealed that Hamza is a resident of Tizi Uzu, a small town in Algeria, born in 1988. Hamza was very good at reading and writing since childhood, and maths was his favorite subject. So he went to university to study, and there he furthered his studies in computers. During his studies, he made the computer his favorite toy, and there was nothing related to the computer that he did not know, and in no time, he became a hacker. Earlier, he used to surprise people by hacking computers while having fun, 
But then suddenly, he became a vicious hacker and started making tunnels inside the computers to enter others' bank accounts. He used to break passwords as if he was playing a game of counting. At the time when Hamza was rapidly moving towards the world of hacking, thousands of kilometers away from Algeria, there was another person in Russia who was very fond of hacking, whose name was Alexander Penin. His age was also not much, he was 25 years old. That means both were almost of the same age. FBI investigation says that Penin actually prepared the software SpyEye through which Hamza hacked computers around the world. But while he was continuously updating the software, Penin came to know about Hamza. Both had similar hobbies. The nature of both was similar. Therefore, friendship soon developed between the two. When two crazy people meet, then where is the fear of the world? So, both of them together made that software their weapon and set out to destroy the world. These people would enter people's computers through viruses and take over the entire computer. But this trend, which started in 2009, suddenly stopped after four years in 2013. On 8 January 2013, Hamza went to Malaysia for a holiday with his wife. The program was that he had to go to Cairo from Malaysia. Thailand was on the way. The clever and sharp hacker Hamza was so smart and alert that he never used his phone for more than a day, because of which it would have been difficult for any agency to trace him. To throw dust in the eyes of the agencies, he often used to talk through satellite phones. After a holiday in Malaysia, when he had to change his flight to Thailand via Cairo, the Interpol officer posted at the airport recognized him. For this reason, the police officer stopped him and his wife at the airport, where Hamza smiled and told everything. The police released his wife, and he was arrested on 8 January 2013. After that, Interpol talks to the FBI, and from here begins a five-month non-stop FBI race. The FBI agents were troubled by the stubbornness of not letting such a famous and vicious criminal go away. In May 2013, Hamza was brought to Atlanta, USA, where the case against him continues. According to the evidence presented by the FBI against Hamza during the two-year-long trial, Hamza and his partner, Penin had looted $4 billion from 217 banks by emptying about 60 million accounts. In June 2015, the court declared Hamza a robber of such a huge amount and sentenced him to 15 years of imprisonment and also imposed a fine of $1 million. After sending Hamza to jail, the FBI team started searching for Penin along with him. One did not have to wander much to achieve success, and in July 2013, the FBI arrested Penin from the Atlanta airport. Penin was also tried and sent to jail. Meanwhile, a rumor quickly went viral on social media, according to which the news of Hamza being hanged spread in the air. Also, Hamza started being given the title of Robin Hood. Along with the campaign, a debate broke out that he was helping the poor and kept giving money to the poor by robbing the rich. The news even spread that Hamza helped the Palestinians. When the investigation started again, no one found any such evidence or clue as to what the person who looted so much money did with all the money. Meanwhile, information came to light that Hamza himself had revealed at Thailand airport that he has only two hobbies, and to fulfill these hobbies, he withdraws money from banks as per his need and spends it. His first hobby is to travel in the first class of the most expensive airplane in the world, and secondly, to live in the most expensive place. Fulfilling his dream of a luxurious lifestyle. However, he did not tell anyone else that he had given the looted money to any organization or people of Palestine. However, overall, the FBI report also revealed that Hamza was none other than a simple thief who had fulfilled his hobbies in a very unusual way by emptying the safes of 217 banks of America. So you saw how a simple hacker defrauded 217 banks to fulfill his wishes. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like it. Please share this video with your friends and hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell so you never miss an update from us. Your support keeps us motivated to create more content like this. Thank you.